Welcome to another season of Talking to Myself News. I'm Kevin Skull Anderson, and for the first time in Talking to Myself News history, I'm going to be reviewing 10 of the worst excuses of video games ever made. And let me tell you people something, I have not done any reviews on video games before, so I'm just going to review very briefly in two minutes or less, 10 games from past and present, which I think are never going to be even close to seeing the light of day again. And let me tell you something guys, these games are total cringe at its worst and let me tell you, if you're a fan of video games, you will not live to see the end of this video without puking yourself into a coma. I'm just kidding, let's, let's, yeah, let's just get to this shit already, right? First of all, we have No Man's Sky, a recently released action-adventure survival game that was released through Hello Games and PS4 and Microsoft just recently in August of 2016, so about a year and a half ago by this point in time. It was first announced in 2013, and there were multiple works in progress that were released prior to the official release of this game, and for whatever reason, people have pointed out a tired but tried and true fact. If a game is not complete, don't release it until you complete it, it's common sense. So this game has an open universe, including over 18 quintillion planets. God knows why, because I wouldn't know, because I'm not an astronomer. But the founder of Hello Games, Sean Murray, wanted to create this game to capture a sense of exploration and optimism of science fiction and art of the 70s and 80s you know 20th century right 1970s 1980s and it was developed it took three years to develop and was promoted and basically you know they received help from Sony Interactive and of course like I said if a game is not complete, don't release a draft of it until it's complete. That way, you won't have your product crapped all over by people and, you know, stuff like that. But, yeah, it's just, it makes sense, doesn't it? Next on deck in this list are the two Sonic Boom games that were released in 2014 by Big Red Button, the Wii U, Sega, Naughty Dog and Sonic Team, supposedly. These two games in question are Rise of Lyric and Shattered Crystal. These are basically based on the recently debuted Sonic the Hedgehog spin-off called Sonic Boom, which has actually proven to be very, very impressive and very transfigured in its in its stage of evolution because this is the first Sonic Boom was the first CGI animated animated TV show 
to be published and released to viewers of television. And these two games did not do this show any justice. Now I would understand if this were if these two games were released about several years after said show debuted on TV, but for something like these two to make its way onto a video gamer's platform on the year that the first episode of Sonic Boom enters television, that's not an excuse at all. Too many bugs, too many glitches, sucky graphics and level design. You know, it just sucks in general. It absolutely sucks. Let's talk about the most recent WWE 2K game called WWE 2K18. This is third on the list, by the way. This game is so cringy and so devoid of actual gameplay that many people who played this game would even say that not only is it a waste of $200, but it's a waste of time, effort, and space in general. You might even say this game should have never gotten released when it did. Now maybe if it got released a month after, maybe we wouldn't have seen enough of 2K invading our platforms with their WWE sponsored crap because that's what it is. WWE 2K18 somehow manages to be worse than the already terrible predecessor 2K17 and it's almost equally as bad predecessor 2K16 I mean seriously it's so bad it might even be useful as a how-to guide on how not to make a wrestling game and let me tell you right now you're gonna thank me for telling you this later if you're gonna spend two hundred dollars on something don't spend it on 2k18 on WWE's latest creation 2k18 spend it on something you need like to keep your electric bill paid to keep the lights on to keep the electricity on the water on to keep yourself fed and watered without having to starve and thirst to death you know just don't buy this sh I'd like to point out that this video has been sponsored by watchmojo.com and by sponsored I mean I credit them in the description because I'm using some of their work as fair use I'm only borrowing it anyway Continuing with this list, we have 2004's Animal Soccer World. Yeah, the PS2 thought it'd be a good idea to release a video game that had next to no actual gameplay for little kids and toddlers aged 3 and up, when it really should have been marketed towards babies like two and under y you know this might even apply to pregnant women <laughs> I mean I don't know I'm just making this stuff up as I go but basically the only good thing about this video game is what you're seeing right there the one memorable the one remarkably memorable good moment in this video game is the voice actors hilarious interpretation of a duck imitating an ambulance siren and let me tell you best part of the video game because everything in it sucks uh, e, uh, e, uh, e, uh, e. I mean for real though <laughs> everything else sucks 
just, just look at this! Look at this! Uh, that doesn't even look right! Uh, I just don't know, man. You make up whatever hullabaloo you want about this game, but it's not worth your time, or money, or life to play this game because you will rage quit for its lack of consistency and gameplay not to mention terrible gameplay why the people at PS2 ever thought it would be a good idea to sell this in their stores I have no clue next up and we're nearly halfway through this list big rigs over the road racing when you think of this game you think about the terrible animation and the terrible gameplay and the numerous flaws and glitches and grammatical errors I mean you don't think about the people who made this game you know you're, you're not talking about the people who made this guy like Artem Mirons mm, let me pronounce it right Artem Mironovsky Sergei Titov produced this game. I mean, the artists for this game, were they high on crack when they made this? What about the programs? Were they high? What, what about the programmers? Were they high on the LSD when they made this? Because any video gamer who's played this game can clearly tell you that the video game confesses that for them. This was released somehow, for whatever reason, on the Microsoft Windows devices and deserved every negative review that they got. Of course, Sergei Titov learned a lot from this because he went on to work for Riot Games on League of Legends before releasing the controversial The War Z in 2012. Speaking of which, what the hell were these people thinking? Look at this, look at this! Why the hell did Game Mill Publishing ever think this deserved even nearly anywhere near as close to being published? And why the hell did Stellar Stone pr promote this? Or develop this or whatever? I mean, I get that they're a video company. I know that they're a video game development company. But but this is just ridiculous. Inexcusable. No lack... There's no physics in this game whatsoever. Just... Yeah, let's try something else. So... Two games were released by Fox Interactive called The Simpsons Wrestling and The Simpsons Skateboarding, of course based on the widely universally popular Simpsons animated series created by Matt Groening. It was published by Electric Arts in 2001 and for whatever reason these games absolutely suck. I mean, you, you just have to be a demon and live under a freaking rock not to know that. Oh man, I just... You know? Talk about a buzzkill. I mean, I don't care though. So, basically at the end of the day, these two games are clear, unfiltered, universally accepted examples on how not to capitalize on an animated TV show by making a couple of games based on it. Another example that I covered earlier in this video is of course Sonic Boom. Now, I don't know that you know this or not, but in case you haven't figured out, I do not care. Enough said. 
you know? But yeah, I just don't... These two games suck. Animation's terrible. And it makes Philips CDI's Zelda games look like Michelangelo Bonarotti in comparison. And Michelangelo was an amazing artist, well ahead of his time, mind you. And let me tell you, The Simpsons Wrestling and The Simpsons Skateboarding is barely edible at best. Like the stuff you'd see in a scummy, would-be Amy's Baking Company style restaurant, you know? Third to last in this case, we have any Philips CDI made game. That includes all three Zelda games and Hotel Mario. Now, I'm gonna tell you why this is. These games are so heavily criticized and so terrible voice acting, animation, gameplay, everything that they've literally become the definition of a meme that's timeless and never ceases to amaze me or anyone else. I'll just give you a rough example, and I'm not going to show you the audio of it, just the video. Except I'm going to do my own interpretation of it. Just a few seconds. Gee, it sure is boring around here. My boy, this piece is what all two wires strive for. I mean, you get it though? Yeah, I mean, that's just a good example of how memorably bad this is. Oh my god, I mean, just look at this, look at this, look no. yeah, at this, yeah, this is so bad, this is just, this absolutely sucks, it sucks so bad, you, you might even say it reeks of utter madness. And speaking of which, this makes the granddaddy of all Raspberry movies, Reefer Madness, look great in comparison. Let me tell you. This, this is like, this is the Michelangelo of terrible, terrible movies. You know, I mean, look at this. Holy crap. I'll give you another example. Join me, Link, and I will make your face the greatest in all of Korodai. Well, she will die. I mean, this just... We have, which is next to last on this list, and possibly one of the most important, Bubsy 3D, also known as Bubsy 3D Forbidden Planet, hence the pun, which was released in... November of 96 in North America and August of 97 for Europe. This somehow received the Gold X Award for being what I think is one of the sleeper hits of 96 and an experience that no action platform gamer should miss according to PS Extreme. It was released by Accolade, developed by Idetic, I mean, whatever the hell you call it. It was made by two guys named Michael Berlin and Christopher Reese. I mean, this is so bad. Look at, I want you to take a look at this. I want you to look at this. Why the hell didn't these guys hire more qualified animators to help them with this? Because they clearly couldn't be able to do this by themselves without fail, as very easily proven here in this particular screenshot. Look at this. Look at how bad this is animated. Look at how badly this is created. Oh my 
god. You wonder why this was the last Bubsy game to be published until Bubsy the Wooly Strike Back on Halloween Day in 2017. Now, I'm not one to criticize a franchise based on one game alone without tearing into it like Gordon Ramsay does a raw dish but this is inexcusable by any standard inexcusable if you want any honorable mentions just go to Wikipedia and type in the search engine Video games notable for negative reception. You'll see the whole list from 1980s to present. And let me just tell you people something. If you haven't figured it out already, the number one worst video game of all time is any Atari 2600 video game released in 1982. Of course, I'm talking about Edeman. I'm talking about Beat 'em and Edom. I'm talking about Custer's Revenge, E.T., Pac-Man. I mean, does this not ring a bell to you people? These four games alone, released for the Atari 2600, deserve to be considered number one just as equally in their own respective rights. Look at this. Beat 'em and eat 'em. Custer's Revenge. Let me just Okay, let's let's talk about ET. ET was coded and developed in just 35 days, 5 weeks in order to have an on-time holiday release in 1982 and it only it only sold about not even a third of what Atari expected one and a half million copies as opposed to the five million it expected to sell now this is not the gamers fault Particularly, I'm talking about the guy who made the game. This is not his fault. He only had five weeks to do this. And a very tight schedule. So to say that he was able to get this done as quickly as he did. In such efficient fashion. Of course, you can't blame, you, you can't blame the guy. Because he wasn't given enough time. Making a game takes months and even years to make. You understand, people? And, and Pac-Man, I just, I can't even, I can't even describe how bad the Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man was and still is. It, it makes... It makes freaking, mm, I can't put to words how bad any of these Atari 2600 games are. Speaking of, the Atari 2600 was a home video game console by Atari, which was released in September of 1977, ironically 34 years to the day before the events of 9-11. Of course, nobody knew at that time that 9-11 would happen 34 years in advance, but when it did, believe me, that's when all credibility for the United States went completely downhill, but beside the point. Let's just say that the Atari 2600, or as it was originally called, the Atari VCS, became widely successful for its Space Invaders game which was released in 1980 and people expected them to follow suit on that because they had high expectations but 
their expectations had been widely exaggerated, especially when these four games that I just mentioned previously came out in 1982. Howard Warshaw is who I'm referring to as far as the guy who made this game anyway. Then of course that led to E.T. doing a mass burial of all their video game consoles that didn't sell in 1983. The rest as they say is history. And as Tommy Sotomayor likes to say to his viewers, fk you and good night. Let's see how many kicks to the ball Sam gets in this episode of Talking to Myself News, huh? Yeah, you up for that, huh? Yeah? Well, guess what? Let the ball kicking commence. It has begun. No, no, seriously, it has. It has. On second thought, okay, okay, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna allow you to keep this a secret between you and me, okay? Don't tell Sam about this shit. Oh, he already knows? Well. Wait a minute, Judy? Is that you, Judy Garland? Last time I checked, you were dead. No, wait. That's just a video of you on YouTube from 1950. I'll, I'll just- GET TO THE BASTARD POINT ALREADY! This is a personal do today, people. Yeah! Hey, now, I got a question for you. Cash it outside. How about that, huh? Hey, we're gonna throw that thing for a little bit, man. Hey, yeah. Good, man. Good. When the donkey makes a jackass of himself, then you wonder why we elected Barack Obama twice, knowing good and well that he was a dumb fuck. Out of here with that, man. He's a jackass and you know it. Here's what we have here, people. Democrat versus Republican. Spoiler alert, the Republican's the better man. Democrat. The Democratic jackass was first associated with Democrat Andrew Jackson's 1828 campaign. His opponents fittingly called him a jackass, and Jackson decided to use the image of the strong-willed animal on his campaign posters. Guess who the voters chose? Andrew Jackson. The jackass. The Republican. In a cartoon that was appearing first in a Harper's Weekly magazine strip in 1874, a mere 50 years later, mind you. Well, might as well be. There was a donkey clothed in lion skin scaring away all the animals in the zoo. One of those Republicans, the elephant, was labeled the Republican vote. And now you know the difference between a Democrat and a Republican. The Democrat's eyes full of shit. The Republican always be honest with you. <laughs> Come on, get happy. You better chase all your cares away. What the fuck is going on here? On behalf of my cartoon mate, self, I'm sorry. And now for a new segment on Talking to Myself News, something I'd like to call... This is I like that. I mean, not that it matters, but you know. Yeah, like that piano pedagogy series of yours. That didn't go anywhere. Huh? I didn't stutter. Now did I? Seriously, oh, you need a life. Well.
You're never going to believe this. Home pain pancakes are tricky. When they're fluffy and light, there's nothing better for breakfast. But when they're bland, lumpy, and stick to the pan, Ew. Your short stack is low fly. You've probably been overlooking a simple ingredient that will take your pancakes from zero to what the fuck is this awesome in about three and a half seconds. That secret ingredient is bacon grease. Here's how to do it. Heat your skillet. But instead of using oil or butter to go the pan, add a dab of baking grease. Then cook your pancakes as you normally would, flipping them when the batter begins to bubble. That's according to a woman named Hannah Lowenthal from the website Eurowow. And believe me when I say this, he's actually making a lot of sense here. So much sense, in fact, you might even say that she has actually tried it herself and actually succeeded at it. Remarkably, I should say. Brilliantly. Why'd I butcher the name brilliantly? Yeah. But anyway. Here's the deal. This is what you have to do. If you're cooking bacon first, which we strongly suggest, just remove the bacon from the pan, dispose of any excess grease, and keep a dollop in the skillet. Then spoon your pancake batter right on the greased pan, which will result in pancakes that are doughy on the inside, crispy around the edges, and taste like heaven and not hell. Pile them high, drizzle with maple syrup, and enjoy with some scrambled eggs. Yeah. You're damn right. Thanks, Hannah Lowenfield. Believe this. The most beautiful libraries in the world. According to Condé Not Travel. Actually, don't go to a library. They're not in modern times anymore. They're not relevant. Neither are schools or colleges of any higher learning. If you want to go to a library, go to Spotify, go to Bandcamp, go to Amazon, go to YouTube, go to Google. Those are the most beautiful libraries in the world, and you don't even have to leave the comfort of your office chair to visit them. That's how beautiful they are. But beware of those dangerous parts of those sites. At which point, if you're not careful, your computer will probably get virus to death. Oh, and by the way, I should also mention, without any doubt in my mind, Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedia gets a lot of flack for being a site where anyone can edit any article in any way imaginable. I know this because I've seen proof of it many, many times. But guess what? Jimmy Wales keeps it all together because he's the man that created Wikipedia. Meanwhile, and you should note, Wikipedia is not an illogical source for information like most of you will claim. No. This site, Wikipedia, is one of the most credible sources of information that you can find out there. Whether or not you want to realize that, now that's up to you. But as far as I can tell, I choose Wikipedia, Google, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and anything else on the internet to get my feel. Not some library or fucking school! Do you get what I need? But then again, you do whatever the hell you want with your life. You're the one that makes decisions, not mine. Right? You're the one that makes the choices. I'm just here to motivate you to make the right choice, not force you to. Anyhow, let's move. Uh, huh? oh! <laughs> Oh,
Sünden Dile Tarzan. Oh. <lacht> oh. Fuck. Oh. <lacht> Follow the way of the time box. Ha! <laughs> Even Uganda Knuckles knows the time box on the way. Forget time box. Take the lawn brownie challenge. Ha! 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 Oh, yeah, that's so. You're better off eating a pile of dog shit than a time box. You damn fucking straight. Yeah. Ha! <laughs> ha! I am sorry if you had to see that. Or better yet, hell, I'm not sorry because you already knew what was gonna fucking happen. Now did you? Is everyone up for another round of crumbs? Well, you came to the right place, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't stop myself from doing that one. Anyhow. Let's go on to our latest venture in this particular venture of our video. And let's see how many people we can squash. Huh? Lie to me! No, seriously. Go ahead and lie to me, I don't care anymore. What? Activity! Hello, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I do! UFC star Conor McGregor is facing a dozen criminal charges as a consequence of his bizarre and violent behavior during UFC 223 Media Day at the Barclays Center on Thursday. Him and as many as 24 other associates of his unexpectedly gained access to the event, and while there, McGregor supposedly hurled a hand dolly through the window of a bus containing other UFC fighters. Well, that doesn't surprise me any. It doesn't surprise me either. Great! 
I ain't never heard of Tom Grogu, but I heard he's a pretty tough guy in real life. Yeah, he is. I believe it, man. Good, yes, yes. Right. Other objects, including chairs and rails, were also thrown during the run. Holy shit! That's no good! I don't want to be around for that! Me neither, but that's life, and we gotta deal with it. At least two other UFC fighters, Michael Chiesa and Ray Ford, apparently suffered significant injuries as a result of the attack, with Chiesa's face being lacerated and Borg suffering an eye injury. And they're now going to miss their scheduled fights on Saturday night. Well, no shit. You think it's just another day in the life and stuff, but it's not. White says McGruster also broke the UFC agreement. White says McGregor also broke the UFC employee's knuckles. Damn. That's pretty legit, isn't it? Oi, you don't say, though. You don't say. McGregor, a native of Ireland, turned himself in to the New York City Police Department and has been processed at the 76th precinct in Brooklyn. And he wasn't the only person charged. So, Dan Crowley, or Cowley, I should say, who was his teammate, also faces assault and felony charges. Well, I guess that's the price we pay for being young and dumb, right? Yeah, I remember being young and dumb once. But I learned from it, so there you go. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way, except I'm not... Dumb like most young people. I mean, people eat they eat Tide Pods for a living. Yeah, you don't say. I know I've ate a Tide Pod at least once in my life, and believe me, it didn't taste good. It tasted like shit. Yeah, I know. There remains uncertainty as to why this 29 year old McGregor, reportedly earning a hundred million dollars plus in fights, as well as millions more in dollars from lucrative endorsements from. Burger King and Anheuser Busch would launch an assault on the books. The attack not only jeopardizes McGregor's mixed martial arts and boxing careers, but also could possibly or probably land him behind bars. Well, that was stupid. Why did you kick Sam in the crotch? Because Sam mouthed off at me. And I wouldn't take it lying down. And I'm just being honest, man. Oh, shit. You must be Sam's wife, right? Damn. I hate to do this to you. But it's only for your own good. The following is the sentence because it's too confusing for the words. Our apologies. You do realize I could be shitting gold bricks right now instead of just watching you dick around and shit. Get to the fucking point already! Does this look like the face of a man who gives a shit about that? Are you fucking kidding me? Eh, uh, could be. <laughs> I think we all know what the answer is to that one there. Yeah. <laughs> It was me, sir. I'll drop and give you 50, sir. What is sleep cleaning? I mean, sleep sleeping. I mean, clean sleeping, damn it. <laughs> what is clean sleeping? Seriously, man. Huh? What is that? I mean, it's poop of food. My clean eating. When sleeping believes that your overall well-being depends on making decisions to help you get the best and healthiest night of sleep. To achieve this, no caffeine after tea, no electronic devices at least an hour before bed, strict bedtime, follow it even through the weekend, keep the room dark and cool, buy a copper pillow. Yeah. That's such a thing. Now think so. Yeah, I don't get no clean sleep, but we were all caffeine in me. I'm still turning out just fine. So I say I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. 
Yeah, me too. But I don't take it any caffeine. Even the desserts that I have are completely sugar-free. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to comment on that. But anyway, I'm not even going to get into it because you already know what this is. You already probably have seen about what this is. You probably went through this. You probably went through this entire slideshow, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, help. Help. Let me just... Let me walk you through this shit. Reading before bed is best. Of course it is! No shit! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Always sleep at the same time every night is... Going to bed at a reasonable hour during the week in order to wake up at 7 a.m. every day. It's just... I don't know, man. I don't know. Mercer with your bedtime interrupts a body clock's ability to regulate heavy sleep patterns. Oh, yeah. I don't doubt that. Well, that thing ain't true. I don't know what the fuck is. You're for that. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, it is going. No, I'm not going to do another Cedric impersonation. You know who Cedric is, right? Wrestling Jesus. We all know who this guy is. He's a really, really good, avid wrestling reviewer. I mean, he's been a wrestling fan for over 40 years, don't think. I don't know how long he's been, so I'm not going to say. But I do know that he's been a wrestling fan for at least 10 years. Like anyway, let's get back to the point anyway, okay? No alcohol before bed. Yeah, I don't. I just don't. I don't see the point in paying for a $60 pillow. Dollar pillows, hello? Are you kidding me? Oh, sleep cycle app. Of course. Because there's an app for that. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. You think? Yeah, I'm not. Cosby's lawyer says that this fight is not over when it's clearly obvious to me that in fact this fight is indeed over. Bill Cosby is guilty and is probably going to spend the rest of his life in a jail cell or a prison cell or whatever. Either way, he's still going to die and the victims that he fucked over got the justice that they needed and that's that. I mean, who cares, man? Nobody gives a shit about Bill Cosby. <laughs> so according to Fox News, Bill Cosby, the 80-year-old comedian best known for his stint as Fat Albert and The Cosby Show, is facing up to 30 years in prison for three counts of molestation each of which carry up to 10 years apiece. Now, I'm not going to tell you why, but this is according to Fox News, which, by the way, is my favorite news channel, and also the one channel of all the other channels that I consider to be the only one that's credible. Of course, you can understand why that is, since CNN, MSNBC, CNBC, and CNN are always full of shit because they force you to believe things that you don't need to believe. So, there you go. Oh, you fucking 
fucking kidding me? The answer, my dear Kevin, is a big fuck resounding no! And don't you forget that. Emma, please step aside. I've got an episode to run here. Are you fucking kidding me? The answer, my dear Kevin, is a big fuck resounding no! And don't you forget that. Emma, please step aside. I've got an episode to run here. Ah, shit. My reasons as to why Roman Reigns will never be a god. Not in a million years, not in a billion years, not in a trillion years. Ever. Let's get started, shall we? First of all, the claim that Roman Reigns was the only one to defeat The Undertaker at WrestleMania is null and void because Brock Lesnar did that three years before that. So he was the one that did it first. And you wonder why everything's going to hell because the internet fan base of Roman Reigns is clearly oblivious to this fact because they refuse to accept it. Number four. Roman Reigns is a paper champion. Roman Reigns, as you all know, and I personally respect the guy as much as anyone else, is a Grand Slam champion in WWE who has been given title after title, reign after reign, hence the name Roman Reigns, because they want him to live up to that moniker and very rightly so, but for all the wrong reasons. Number three, he is kin to Dwayne The Rock Johnson, which bears mentioning his fixed 2015 Royal Rumble win from three years before, when he went to challenge Brock Lesnar in their first encounter at WrestleMania in 2015. Which ended, of course, with Seth Rollins doing the unthinkable and cashing in money in the bank on Roman Reigns, the challenger, and not Brock Lesnar, the champion, to become the new champion. They had three years after that to push the guy, but the only excuse they could come up with is that The Rock is his cousin, and for that, he should be considered as the guy. Number two. Roman Reigns is Romos, if I'm even allowed to call them that. Roman Reigns' promos are mediocre at best. The only reason as to why Roman Reigns is the guy is because he has a very, very strictly limited move set, the spear, the Superman punch, and so on. And on top of all that, his suffering Sokotash promo is cringeworthy at best. His best promos were when he was in The Shield with Reigns' tag team partners Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins who would eventually turn on him and Ambrose, effectively ending The Shield. Of course, a reuniting of The Shield wouldn't help any, as Reigns and Ambrose eventually got injured, which pretty much halted that. Since then, his promos have been very, very cringeworthy and very reminiscent of North Korea's winner and the Golden Child. And they can come up with a better storyline than WWE can for Roman Reigns. And most of all, number one, Reigns is Vince's latest fetish. Vincent Kennedy McMahon, as you know, is the chairman and CEO of World Wrestling Entertainment, who has made stars like Hulk Hogan, Bruno Sammartino, which apparently was his father's favorite man. Hulk 
Hulk Hogan, of course, was the OG Superman. Shawn Michaels eventually took over that role after Bret Hart from 1997 until his potentially career injury, career ending injury in 1998. And then he came back four years later and had another run which lasted a lot longer. And then Cena stepped in to become the new Superman. And now we have Reigns. Vince McMahon, of course, has had four years to promote Reigns as the guy and has failed massively. As you can clearly see by this picture. And that is five reasons as to why Roman Reigns will never be the guy unless they turn him heel. And you can tell them I said that too. <laughs> Ah, shit. Tell me this, people. Tell me this. Would you believe me if I told you that today, as of this taping, is the seventh anniversary of Osama bin Laden's death? Would you believe me if I told you that? Well, I happen to find this Wikipedia page by God, and I happen to find it right here. Oh, you did? Yeah. You don't say. I mean, there's that, just, oh my God, that's crazy, man. What the hell? Yo, I think that was special. So, ah, shut up. What on to the is this? Osama bin Laden was the man who supposedly was responsible for the rise of the Taliban, of Hezbollah, of ISIS, and all these other terrorist organizations. So, it figures quite a lot, I should say. And, and that's not all. You can only imagine what his name literally translates to, right? So, it figures, man. So, According to Wikipedia, Bin Laden's name is supposedly Arabic for whatever reason. Of course, Wikipedia won't tell me. Um, that's just that that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. You better believe it. Okay. So what? What's the hell? What the hell did the damn born in this shit, man? The hell's the born in this? Would you get the fuck out of here? Yeah. Okay, I'm going. Yeah. Yeah, let's get to this man had a father named Muhammad bin Laden, a Saudi billionaire from India. His mother was from a secular middle-class family based in Syria. He was born in Saudi Arabia and decided to join Pakistani forces. I mean forces fighting against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan, funding this force through armed money and fighters and gained popularity among many Arabs. Forming Al Qaeda in 1988, vanished from Saudi Arabia in 92, forced to leave Sudan by the U.S. in 1906 and 1996, and declared a war against us. A series of bombings related attacks would eventually ensue, and he was on the FBI's permanent shit list for the rest of his life. Hi, everybody! Hi, Nick. Wait, you're not Nick. Hi, I'm Barney the Dinosaur. Get the hell out Hi, everybody! Oh, there you are, Nick. How are you? Bye, everybody! was shot and killed, supposedly on this very day, eight or seven years ago, 
by the United States Naval Special Warfare Development Group, supposedly SEAL Team 6. Supposedly, Barack Obama still claims responsibility for this, even though SEAL Team 6 were actually the ones that actually killed him in the first place. So, it figures. It all figures itself out, whether you want to believe it or not. Okay, what the hell is going on here? I don't even know the hell is this anymore. Man, I'm just this no, this bullshit, man. You know it's not bullshit. You know it's a real thing, isn't it? Really says so on the Wikipedia. Shot by U.S. forces. Shot in the freaking head by a sniper. And that's the way it is. So I talk about how insanity is normal nowadays, but apparently I'm not always right, because there's a bunch of people out there who are way more insane and some of these people aren't even guilty they're innocent and they were proven innocent and yet these people get locked up for whatever reason but I'm not going to go into that now right? the point is 2 plus 2 equals 4 all day all week, all year 24-7, 365 don't let anybody tell you different meanwhile here are some very insane people who I believe are also clear examples of how to live life right. Let's check them out, shall we? I mean, I mean, seriously though. So I want to start with a man, a French high wire artist named Philippe Petit, who walked across a tightrope suspended between the World Trade Center's twin towers that stood around 200 feet apart in New York City, in New York State, in the American. United States on August the 7th, 1974. This feat was performed 1,350 feet above the ground and lasted about 45 minutes. Without a safety net and using a balancing pole, he made eight passes along the wire. Eight. The average ordinary human being can't do that. I can tell you that much. Now let's look at this guy, Swiss Daredevil Freddy Knock. This guy set the world's highest tightrope record with a walk between two Swiss mountaintops. Jankograd, which is 15, which is basically 11,800, 11,588 feet. And these brilliance on March 20th. 2015. Why they don't mean how many feet tall it is, I don't know. But during the stunt, Nock negotiated an altitude difference of 164 feet without using any safety equipment whatsoever. His feet broke the previous world record set by a man I mentioned previously who set that record initially in 1974. Now here's what gets me. This is here's another guy. Here's another guy. This guy named Kane Peterson, a high wire artist, walked a tightrope about 984 feet above the ground at Eureka Tower on September the 16th, 2015, in Melbourne, Australia. Peterson crossed the 69 foot distance twice without any safety net despite developing a leg cramp during the act. It was the highest tightrope walk ever in the southern hemisphere. Yeah, you, you don't fucking say. No shit. And now we move on to this next guy. This, this guy, he's related to another guy that I'm going to be talking about later. On July the 18th, 1970, an aerialist of the name Carl Valenda that's Rolando with the W. The W, I believe, is pronounced with a V, if I remember correctly. Crossed the 750-foot deep Taluba Gorge in Georgia 
on a tightrope in America. Luck, however, was not on this guy's side because when he attempted this in 1978, it would end in him failing and following, pretty much just following to his death while attempting to grow, to walk a cable strung between two hotel towers in San Juan, Puerto Rico. This guy, that's that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty damn cruel. Not a good way to go, especially when you know that the odds of you dying during all this is pretty good. Meanwhile, his great grandson, Nick Melinda also a high water artist, has multiple Guinness records under his gut for having completed a numerous amount of acrobatic feats, becoming the first person to walk a tightrope stretched directly over Niagara Falls across the U.S. side to the Canadian side, covering 1,800 feet, equivalently 550 meters, in 25 minutes? in The next year, he went on to become the first person to cross a Grand Canyon Gorge on a wire. And that's not counting all the other achievements that he achieved and managed to accomplish, one of which I saw on TV once. So keep that in mind. And then there's this guy. This guy, a Canadian type roper named Jay Cochran set multiple records throughout his extensively long career, notably for skywalking more than 2,000 feet at a height of about 1,340 feet over the Yangtze River in China in 1995 and traversing the 1,300 feet distance from Skylon Tower to the pinnacle of the Hilton Falls View Hotel above Niagara Falls in Ontario, Canada in 2012. Now that's some pretty scary shit now, isn't it, man? Damn it, you got me for stop! Please register me! Now I gotta beat the crap out of you! Very Roman Reigns some more, shall we? Okay, WrestleMania 33 should have been the event in which they turned Heel, and the Shield should have lost against Evolution at that event, with Roman Reigns effectively breaking up the Shield and pulling the Seth Rollins before Seth Rollins could pull Seth Rollins. WrestleMania 31, they still push Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns loses. WrestleMania 32, they push Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns becomes their hand-picked arrow Uno. WrestleMania 33, they have him defeat The Undertaker and become the 2 with 24 and 2, and he's still not over. WrestleMania 34, they have him lose again in a rematch between himself and Lesnar from three years prior at this year's 34th WrestleMania. He's still not over. Greatest Royal Rumble, they have him defeat in another rematch against Lesnar, which he supposedly should have won because technically his feet touched the floor first, despite botching the ending, but they make Lesnar the winner because of poor fishing. He's still not over, people. Do you get it? Now it is time for the WGF Rewind! Okay, so you know that we're all responsible for the extinction. Right? Well, if you didn't know that, then let me give you some insight on why we're going to be responsible for the death of all the rhinos in the world. If it's... No, no, seriously, seriously, look, you, just, you, you aren't going to want to miss this. You're, you're never, ever, ever going to want to miss this. Look, listen, 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 listen. What will happen when all the rhinos are extinct? Not only will we lose the chance to witness and study these majestic creatures, but their demise could spell mobilized trouble on an epic extinction level scale. Because they're considered a keystone species and have a large impact on the ecosystem, and 
without them, the environment can drastically change. Without rhinos, according to one study, there are fewer grazing lawns since they keep other foliage from taking over. In fact, when rhinos regularly die, there are nearly 20% more grazing lawns, proving they're doing far more for the environment than just watching greenery. Another way rhinos help just by eating is by allowing other species of grass to take root by clearing the area of the dominant and energy just to take a look at this. Take a look at this. And and not only will this affect the environment, but it'll also lead to a chain reaction of other extinction events regarding animals that will eventually kill off if we don't change our ways. And we're going to end up killing off the gazelle, we're going to end up killing off the antelope, the zebra, eventually the horse. We're already almost killed off the tiger already. And, and the snake. Since rhinos can be fairly, since rhinos can be basically the equivalent of a human being's worth of food in a day, literally 175 pounds, they're doing a lot of heavy lifting helping to clear areas and encouraging people to others. And let me tell you, let me, let me just tell you, there are a lot of animals that rely on these creatures. I'm telling you people, a lot of animals. And there are a lot of people that rely on these animals too. A lot of wildlife tourists and all these other sorts of people. I mean, seriously. And you wonder why we're in deep shit. Well, look at yourselves in the mirror. And you'll find your fucking answer! Today's episode has been brought to you by my friend, the Burning Princess, who has a project regarding the Gallus Malatar universe that's been going on for quite some time, and she's highly interested in having you aboard to help her contribute to it. If ever you need to chat with my friend BP and come up with some ideas for her world, just go to her DeviantArt page and send her a private note expressing your interest in her project, and she will be able to negotiate something out. And with that said, it's also worthy that it's also been brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, paid publicly by Shockers like you. Thanks, you. Welcome to this episode of Talking to Myself News, and now we begin our episode by introducing to you all some very spoiled kids. Brought to you by the classic YouTube channel. That's classic with a K. Really? You know what? Are you serious right now? Get in your room. Get in your room. Are you serious? Pick that up. And then get in your room. Mommy! In your room. In your room. I love you too. In your room. In your room now before I count to three. One. One. Close your door. You're so sad. You're gonna be even more sad. Oh my god. Now that's how you make it. Pick that up too! You're not, you're right. You're absolutely right. You're not having the TV tonight. Oh, because she wants her to sleep because she wants to sleep. Everything on the floor. A little breath. Nah. You can go in your room now! You go in your room. You can go in your room! I don't care! Don't try. I'm not even doing anything. I haven't even touched you. 
I haven't even touched you. I'm letting go. You're not walking yourself in mom's room. No. Go. No, no. Now. No. Go. No. In another room. No. You're not locking yourself in mom's room. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Instant replay! Shall we? Now! No, seriously, we have a present moment. No! Go. no. In another room. No! Three. You're not locking yourself in my yes, room. I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. And by the way, let's just move onward to another topic now, because I just don't feel like covering this anymore. Yeah, that sounds good to me! Yeah. What do we talk about now? Like, I mean, it could be anything, right? What do we talk about? Spoiled adults! <laughs> ah, shit! And here's my buddy, Jack Osobiec, with another play in 3X. Seriously, though, you're going to want to see this. This is what happens every single day with people on Twitter. All day. All day. All day. Stay you right, Jack. Let's place a little side wave. I'll bet you that Trump is indicted by the end of this year. If I lose, I'll treat you to a nice steak dinner at the Capitol Grill. If you lose, dinner's on you. Are you gay? John Cooper, I'll take that steak dinner now. John Cooper blocked you! Not a surprise, huh? Fucking pussy. What a pussy. Yeah. Kinda reminds me of something. You know? It, it reminds me of something. It's actually pretty simple. Cause you know, this picture says it Because it's really the department. It's not the Department of Justice anymore. It's the Department of Just Us. Because we're the only ones that get justice anymore. Everyone else gets fucked up the ass. Donald Trump's tweet from earlier today sums up everything in a freaking nutshell. Seriously, though, check it out. These are his words. Congratulations, America. We are now into the second year of the greatest witch hunt in American history, in history, and there is still no collusion and no obstruction. The only collusion was that done by Democrats 
who were unable to win an election despite the spending of far more money. I mean, they, they spent so much more money than I did, and they still lost. They still lost. I mean, money can buy you happiness, but they can't buy you an election. And, and seriously though, and you wonder why I call them animals. You wonder why I call Hamas animals. You know why I call ISIS animals. Because they don't deserve to be human beings. And the word animals fit them so much more fittingly and appropriately. In eight years, I've never uh, had to hire a lawyer. Wallace stepped to his base. Donald Trump has moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Woohoo! Wait, you like dudes now? I guess so. Ha! Look at the guy with his swastika! Ah! Ha ha ha! Ah! Have his swastika for a tattoo! on society. Seriously, what the fuck are they thinking? All the subjects, yes. They always have been. And the left just exposed them to what they fucking are. That's good. Oh my god, this is... Oh man, I gotta see this. I gotta... Oh man, hold on. Oh, what the fuck? Redcliffe Award! Yay! He's gonna get a Redcliffe Award for being married to a fucking child molester. Life is a joke. Her family is a joke. The whole Democratic Party is a joke. Fucking shit. Yeah. Why aren't I 50 points ahead, you deplorable little people? Fuck! Because you have no campaign, you never had a campaign, and you never will. Because you're shit at what you do. Oh, and, and by the way, by the way, I have a very, very serious question to ask you, everybody. and I've asked you this many times with no answer given on your end of the deal. So I ask, for the last fucking time, and I'm trying to be polite here, I'm going to ask you, by the way, did you not learn from Barack Obama's failed presidency? Did you not learn from fucking Nixon? Did you not fucking learn from Andrew Jackson and what he did to the indigenous people when he wiped them out most of the way? Well, I have a very, very important question. By the way, by the way, by the way, have you, have you noticed how shit your foundation is? Because it's absolute shit. I mean, seriously though, you've got to be fucking kidding me. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. You, you'd think, you would think, for whatever fucking reason, that there would be an alternative to this, but it's not. But at the end of the day, what I'm really trying to ask is... <laughs> I'm 
absolutely right for saying that because that actually happened. They were spying on them. And, 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 I'm looking at <laughs> How ironic is that, man? History of the world will want to go to Netflix to sign a deal to produce a series of documentaries with them. I mean, this is a fucking joke. Exactly, and that's why I love Bastion people like that. Especially if you change to the one. Yeah, you don't say. So, what's for dinner? Barack Obama on a steak? Ha <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I love that. You have a great sense of humor. Yeah, no shit. By the way, what's... What the hell? I mean, it's obvious that this is a whole damn witch hunt. Seriously. The whole damn thing on Trump is a witch hunt, and Obama's the mastermind behind it. So let's blame the entire bastard fucking Democratic Party. Hey, I got a question for you. Wrestling is a scripted sport, a soap opera, if you will. But what about the most popularizing people in the history? You know, for instance, people like, I don't know. Well, Sting technically is not necessarily a catalyst, but other such people pertaining to what he does, like, I don't know, Carter, Vince, Trips. Steph, Cena, Hulk, Dwayne, Mula, Snuka, Hernandez, Snuka, pretty much all those people in general that you see right here that are popping up before your eyes. And in reality, it's not that hard to figure out, to figure out what they have in common. And what, if anything, do they have in common? Well, it's quite simple. They killed wrestling. How many moments do you two get? Honestly, you know, in life. You guys know about Billy Graham, right? The infamously popular evangelist who for generations on end preached the word of God exactly as God himself would preach it. This guy was legit. He was the best thing that Christianity in this country ever had, and this world as a whole. But a couple months ago, on a Tuesday, he passed away, and for whatever strange reason, he posted this Facebook message a mere four hours before his death. Listen to this. If you went for a walk in the woods, but then decided to wander off the path, and you found yourself surrounded by a thicket of thorns and poison ivy, who would you blame? Would you blame the person that built the path? No, of course not. Instead, you'd be blaming yourself if you were honest, because you alone were responsible for wandering from the path. 
a far deeper way, this is what happens when we decide to leave God out of our lives and abandon Him. For a time it may seem like wandering away from Him doesn't make any difference necessarily. In fact, in some cases it may even seem easier and freer. But eventually it catches up with us just as wandering off that path and into that thicket eventually catches up with you. Honestly, this guy led a great life, but Billy's choice of words here four hours before his death couldn't possibly be worded any better than when he put it when he posted that message on Facebook. This was basically his last Facebook post. Keep that in mind. I'd also like to point out that his son, Franklin Graham, is also a really good preacher and evangelist, but I'm not so sure about whether he'll live up to his father's legacy or not. But we'll find out together, won't we? Meanwhile, we got some other shit to tell you. See, several days ago, I think it was on, what was it, the 17th? Yeah, it was the 17th. I think it was the 16th, actually. But on the 16th, at about 9 a.m., approximately, I got a message on my Twitter feed that said that I'd be suspended and couldn't really access my account for about 12 hours. This is what I had to say about it. Twitter, you failed us. You suspended me for 12 hours today because of three tweets that I made exposing the truth of the deep state which you deliberately choose to collude with daily in a failing attempt to suppress awareness. And now, everybody knows that you're all lying. I actually have Twitter posts that I'm going to continue keeping up until I'm told to do otherwise. For obvious reasons, I'm not going to name what they are, but you know. And also, before you start backpedaling once again, and shadow banning people like myself for having the nuts to tell the truth that you may ever have the courage to expose, let all the deplorables in America and throughout the world and I remind you that you're not above the law. Dorsey, Glass, Stone, Williams, I understand that you found the point. I understand that you launched it in 2006 as an alternative to Zuckerberg's Facebook. And my respect for you regarding that is endless and profound. But it was we, the people, the deplorable people, who supported you. And yet, with all the love that all of us around the world, we call Earth, have given to you, what did you do to it all? You sent it to the proverbial slaughterhouse and turned it into mass-produced meat so you could buy it all in droves and feed your bottomless sheep. What? You fed your bottomless egos all for what? Just so you could compete with the now worldwide monopoly that is Google? By the way, Google is owned by their parent company, Alphabet Incorporated, which many of the people may have never heard of, but there are quite a few videos that explain this. Also, it's actually quite ironic. And how ironic is that, since they bought you and own you now, just like they do with almost every other social media channel online. Now, I'm aware that the four of you obviously never get an ounce of sleep because you supposedly, suspectingly, consistently wiretap us all into oblivion and I know that you're staring into my face right now and I know you're listening to what I'm saying right now but at the end of the day you four share in common what I share in common with every godly creation every human being, every animal and so forth a spirit 
the four of you not only share a soul in common with everything that God made, including us human beings, but you also share the same lifeblood, the same planet, which is one of countless quintillions of worlds that God made himself, and the same existential key element. The element, of course, being mortality. But Dorsey, Glass, Stone, Williams, what did you do with all that stuff that God made for you and gave you? What did you do with all that? You flushed it down the toilet to align with the Bavarian Illuminati, the deep state, which by the way is deep in shit. There's a hashtag that I made famous by the way, hashtag deep state deep in shit. You'll understand it more as you look through my feed on Twitter. And all of the other counterparts of Satan's brainwashing region, thus losing and permanently shredding in the fucking shredder any shred or blot of credibility you originally had to start with. So now, in front of God and everyone else, and with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ himself as a witness, I say to you for plain hindsight, so that everyone can hear me speak on their behalf, as well as mine, the game's over, the jig's up, the fix is in. Why? Well, it's actually simple. You have been exposed. Talking to myself, nude is sponsored by M. Ixio, where you can unrace unwanted objects from your photos and replace your photo backgrounds with just a click and much more? I mean, not that it matters, but who cares? And it's also been sponsored by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which is made possible by suckers like you. Thank you. It is time once again to activate smart ass mode. Haha! <laughs> Didn't see that shit coming. So here are a few theories I have regarding three of the primary cast members of Total Drama. You know that franchise that's been running for over 10 years now? Yeah, that's the one. Let's get started. First of all, we have Chef Hatchet. I believe he is a former military soldier who got called up by Chris McLean to help him co-host the show, hence the Total Drama franchise that was created, and revolving specifically around the love-hate friendship that these two share. Notice these faces. Now, Chef Hatchet suffers from what many would like to consider as being a complex form of post-traumatic stress disorder, otherwise known as CPTSD, complex post stress you know, the same thing, you know, basically just worded it differently because his situation varies greatly, especially considering all the shit that Chris McClain put him through throughout the show's run, which by the way, as far as I know, is still ongoing, not that it matters, but it totally doesn't matter. Anyway, moving on to the next topic, we have the host of the Total Drama franchise itself, Chris McClain. Who, by the way, is an absolute psychopath, who is also a murderer, and does this show in secret, deliberately to hide the fact that he is organizing a mass murder ring. 
pretty shocking, isn't it? Considering how the guy wanted to be famous, but Hollywood turned him down for whatever reason because they thought they could play God and God was playing them the whole time. Turns out Chris McLean doesn't think any differently than they do. He thinks he's God, so apparently, as you can see in these pictures, he created the Total Drama franchise specifically as a host, mind you, to operate this secret and otherwise esoterically hidden mass murder ring, which also involves teenagers, by the way. And speaking of teenagers, let's talk about one right now. Of course, I'm talking about Izzy. The woman with multiple personality disorder, with multiple personalities about her, including Brainzilla, naming one off the top of my head, because I can't remember anything else. Right off time. Anyway, this is the smartest woman in the show. She has an IQ of 188, which literally indicates to me that she is a top-tier savant with not only multiple personality disorder, but also a god complex. Her ego is as wide as a light year, and she has this distinct capability of having multiple personalities Namely, her Brainzilla personality, which shows off her incredible IQ of 188, as mentioned in one of Total Drama's episodes. Namely, from Season 2 or 3, depending on which one you've watched. Anyhow, she's also of Irish descent, hence her ginger hair. So that makes a lot of sense because Irish people are very smart. I know that because my father was half Irish, which makes me 75% Irish, 25% German, which essentially means that my father was basically full-blooded Irish, and my mother, of course, was half German, half American. So. Ah, uh, pretty much explains it, doesn't it? I mean, not that it matters, but nobody's gonna care anyway, so... It's not really gonna mean anything. The bottom line is simple. Izzy is a very smart woman who will go to any length to prove her capabilities, not just as a human being, but as a secret weapon to the FBI, the CIA, and the rest of the Deep State as proven throughout the show's run. You're probably asking me why that is. Well, just look it up. You'll find out yourself. Somebody touch a my spaghetti! Who wants to talk about Roman Reigns? Anyone? Anyone? Seriously, dude. Who wants to talk about Roman Reigns? I do! No way. Right, let's talk about it. So Roman Reigns is Vince McMahon's secret hobby. Yeah, that's right. He's gone full on gay with Roman Reigns, pushing him for four or five years. He pushed him at WrestleMania 30 to beat his son-in-law in their stable. He pushed him at WrestleMania 31, only to lose to a cashing in Seth Rollins, who cashed in his money in the bank to become the new champion. Oh, by the way, he lost to Brock Lesnar at this year's WrestleMania in 2018 in New Orleans. And he decided to become the two in The Undertaker's 24 and 2. Of course, this was a year before The Undertaker got his 24 and his 24 and 2. Meanwhile, we had Triple H job out to Reigns. We had The Undertaker job out to Reigns. And yet, he is still not over. Why in the fuck 
do we continue to push Roman Reigns? I will never understand. Hey, I've got an idea. Why do we push Roman Reigns? Because he's our top guy. Because he's our number one. Shut up! He said that right. By the way, are you Vince McMahon? Yeah, I'm Vince McMahon. So can I tell you something? Yeah, go ahead and tell me. Yeah! Fire! Dude, that's a perfect business. Hey! Get out of here, Seriously, though, I don't, I don't even care about WWE. The only reason why I watched WWE and hopped in since 1993, pretty much since I was born, is to see how far down the shit this product would go. Meanwhile, how about we talk about a bunch of other bullshit that nobody needs to care or give two fucks about. Let's talk about Netflix. In memoriam of Netflix. Killed by ISIS, democracy, and the Obamas. Now, if you will, please, let us all pay tribute to Netflix who, by the way, was killed by Obama, as we take part in a moment of silence, as we told the proverbial bullshit bell ten times. Why the fuck would the guys at Netflix even consider doing a series of movies based on the Obama family and thus ruining any bit of credibility that they had in the 21 years prior to this company killing decision? This is literally business suicide. Why? I mean, seriously. Though. Does, does anybody care about fucking Barack Obama anymore? All he does is suck Hamas's dick. And he sucks fucking Donkey Dung for all I care. He sucks Donkey Dong. Nobody cares about Donkey Dong. Nobody wants to suck Donkey Dong except the people who are too selectively retarded enough to believe in that shit. Anyway, point prove it. Barack and Michelle Obama raking in a bunch of cash thanks to Netflix and George Soros and the Clintons and the Bushes and the Careys and the Pelosi's, the Reeds, the Schumer's and pretty much the entire bastard DEEP STATE DEEP IN SHIT and I'm sure. Yeah, because reasons! And we all know what they are. I mean, just, just, seriously though, take a moment to, to look at this fucking train wreck. Look at all these people that agree with me in their respective tweets. Seriously though, follow these people. Elizabeth P, T. Marie Alexander, ACE, I'm shit, I'm shit dog, come and get them to A, Asia, right, RN, Ail, TJ Barrett, Female angler about everything we support for us in the wool. All these people in general, please follow their accounts on Twitter. You will never be disappointed with what they have to offer. By the way, Boycott Netflix is going to be the biggest boycott in internet history, much less the history of the world. And I think that's a severe understatement at that. I'm a big dum dum, shooting bullets out of my dum dum. Now me want gum gum, so I can go jump jump, motherfucker.
buluyorum. Aa, bizden anladın ne imkanı ne? So, Wayne Dupree just posted something on Twitter some time back as it is reported. A coach just removed chairs from a team who disrespected the national anthem. Disrespected? Disrespected? Yeah, disrespected. And gives to kick and gives to veterans. You thought I was gonna say not such a little bit. I didn't really care about that. Yeah, but he gives them to veterans. And this video is a wake-up call for all millennials. Because everything that they have right now was given to them by an older generation. Remember, Memorial Day, people! Memorial Day! Here's how I responded to that. And they want to be NBA players, even though they're anti-American, even though they're pro-Antifa, even though they suck democratic donkey dong, even though they were handed everything on silver platters, even though they're pro-terrorism, even though they eat Tide Pods? Please. You got to be kidding me. Fuck, man. You kidding me? What a joke. And just a reminder to all you people out there, to all you spoiled dumbass athletes who make millions of dollars every fucking goddamn year and shit on us with your $100 bills. Freedom isn't free. Alright. Going now to Tommy Lauren, another fellow Trump. She made this ironic tweet about a post from Fox Business who tweeted that NFL spokesman Brian McCarthy told Fox that the league rejected a Super Bowl 42 ad from the American veterans group due to its political nature because it contained the words We stand Yeah, standing to standing to respect the flag and the Ray Milton who fight overseas so spoiled athletes can make millions to throw a ball super offensive and controversial Wow Just wow Wow you don't fucking say! And finally, I'm off to at IDO 2853-0316 says, All these four of which now you make the cut. Because while we talk about the lettuce, it is a falsity. This! Look at this picture. Look at this picture is giving 100%. So you athletes need to get off your spoiled millionaire asses and knees and stand for the flag for which these men gave 100%. Because we, so we all know what they are. Meanwhile, Political Magazine posted this tweet on May the 25th, five or so days ago, I think. I no, it's more like three as of this recording. They said that the depiction of protesting athletes as spoiled and rich has become a durable meme in the culture war. As powerful a symbol as the welfare queens of the Reagan era. Yeah, that's because Colin Kaepernick is a Muslim dick sucker who supports Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and willingly sold his soul for Satan for 15 nanoseconds of fame. Not 15 minutes, not 15 seconds, not even 15 frames. 15 nanoseconds of fame. Meanwhile, back in February, my friend Scott Rickoff, also known by his Twitter name, Drain the Swamp, came up with this tweet. TV ratings for Winter Olympics opening ceremony down 10% from Sochi. No one cares about stupid athletes! Ratings for the Winter Olympics opening ceremony in the first few days of broadcasts are in, and the results are not good for NBC. Also known as the National Brainwashing Corporation. 
yeah. Get that in your head and stick it where the sun don't shine, right? Meanwhile, my friend Janice TX Plus writes the following her tweet. And by the way, I totally agree with all these people mentioned here. I'm really not caring too much about the Olympics this time. As for the hateful rhetoric that the spoiled little athletes are skewing, they seem to be representing themselves, not their country. Didn't watch NFL. I think the Olympics can do without my viewership also. Cause they're a bunch of Shakur is grinning in his grave, and you can believe that. So amusing and so interesting, I couldn't help but share them with you because these are so true. These are so true. These actually happen. These things actually happen in real life. Like, like this first one. This, this guy. Apparently made a confession on April the 25th at 8.08 p.m. He says, oh, and this is not millennials are retarded. From some guy, which obviously won't be named here. He died of shame, obviously. Sometimes I like to eat in a bathtub and get a bone. I'll let the water rise lie. barely sticks out the top. Before doing all this, I catch a fly and rip its wings off so it can't fly. Once the water's right and just my tip is sticking out, I put the fly on it. Since it can't fly or swim, it panics and just runs around really fast in circles. I let this happen until I go, you never have been drowning of my amount in, which is the best part for me, what? Oh, <laughs> oh my god! You can't be kidding! Oh no! Oh man, man. Hey, y'all do three burgers. Okay, man, it's a lot of good dirt. Hey, it's a good dirt. Here's another one. This, this post is so... Unequivocally true. Look, some of y'all wouldn't be having baby mama drama today if you had just listened to the cookie! And there's a photo that literally insists that this fortune cookie told the photographer to masturbate. Why not feed yourself to a good time instead of waiting for someone else to do it? Tupac Shakur is grinning in his grave, and you can believe that. Is where the hell do you think I got it? Okay. This this is another one of my favorite posts to this. I swear this came from Clinton's deleted tweets! Hillary Clinton pointing out this photograph and said, My culture is not your goddamn portrait! Um Yes it is. And you can thank this beauty woman for that, man. Look at that, she's pretty. She's prettier than your daughter and your entire family. And you can stick that up your ass and shut Why 
this has never been more important for it to be. For the World News Day Paper Board dot com, a man, obviously a leader in time, Shane Turner, crashes into a river after attempting to give himself a blowjob while driving. Oh! Why the hell would you do that? Just imagine what he'd be doing while he was drunk. Laughing to a porn magazine on his fucking smartphone while downing a Budweiser. What the fuck? Jesus! Jesus help this man. He doesn't know when to stop. Okay, last, last one for this one, right? This, this, this is gonna be, this is just, this is something that becomes straight out of a family guy set. Seriously. Just, just, just check this, check this post out. This dumbass decides to buy something like this. That's here. To which he replies. So yeah, so she has this What kind of dog do you have? And then he responds with, I don't have a dog. I'm just retarded because I'm a millennial and selective retardation is being you. If you can't handle the cringe that is in this fucking shit, do not look at it, or watch another video, or go check out another YouTube channel, or another website, because you don't fucking belong here. Right? Right. I mean, it's so fucking obvious, isn't it? It's, it's actually hard to Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Written in a grave, <laughs> and you can believe Jesus. That. Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which is made possible by suckers like you. Thanks, you. <laughs> you cannot come back from that. It's just fucking impossible. <laughs> Gentlemen, 
I'm going to pull a proverbial pipe bomb and go Jerry Styles all over Kevin Johnson's ass. Of course, you know who Kevin Johnson is. If you look at his Wikipedia, he's the current CEO of Starbucks, a satanic company who is in cahoots with you know who, and I'll get to that a little bit later. As for right now, we go live with Kevin Anderson for his chillest pipe bomb ever. Take it away, Kevin. Seriously, though, you're going to need to be very chill about it because you don't want to piss the people at Twitter off. Seriously. Oh, I got it. Don't worry about it. I got it. We know that you've been the CEO of the Bavarian Illuminati counterpart known as Starbucks Coffee since April the 3rd, 2017. We know that you're in league with Satan. We know that you're in league with the deep state. We know that you're in cahoots with democracy and socialism and Nazis like George Soros. Oh, by the way, by the way, we're not, I'm not trying to be mean to you or anything, sir, but I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speaking on behalf of the hundreds upon hundreds of millions of people who willingly buy your company's product running the risk of cancer every single time they taste a cup of it. Seriously. You guys pay no corporation tax. You are secretly worshippers of Satan and members of Bohemian Grove. And I would like to say personally, on behalf of the hundreds and hundreds of millions of people who buy into your product or have bought into your product over the years, that if you cannot pull a Wizard of Oz on us and at least try to be honest with us and tell us everything that we've known about your company this whole time, that you are, in fact, in league with Satan and Adam Weishaupt and the Bavarian Illuminati and Bohemian Grove and fascism and dictatorships and terrorism and democracy and the deep state like we've known all along then we will continue to expose you for the fraud that your company is okay and we're just being real with you not that it matters or anything but still i mean damn bruh do you see all these black people that that are protesting on the street you got too little too latte enough no more you know shame on you starbucks you know all these signs out there that these people themselves wrote they didn't get paid to write this stuff they i mean seriously man you gotta understand you gotta understand unless you've been living under a rock your entire life you would know that Starbucks is a subdivision of Weishaupt's Illuminati. And, and I know that you may already know this. And I know that you're probably selectively retarded enough to choose not to know this because you just don't give a fuck. But, buddy. I'm speaking on behalf of the people, because they need to know this shit a hell of a lot more than I do. I already know about this, and you do too. But unlike you, I actually realize this shit. I know exactly what Starbucks is about. They are a subdivision of the Illuminati, and you need to start confessing that, sir. Because, you know, Kevin Johnson... I used to respect you as a human being. 
Now I just feel sorry for you. Because you've allowed yourself to become the poster boy of the Adam Weiss helped of coffee, which is Starbucks. I believe I mentioned that on a Twitter post not too long ago as of this recording. And believe me, if you were to see the truth behind that, you'd go full on scorched earth about it and you wouldn't accept it to save your life, even if your freaking family depended on it. Unlike another family who one of your ancestors and a friend of George Soros is killed during World War II during the Jewish Holocaust. Meanwhile, President Obama, the man who you should be directing your fire upon, is the man who created the racial Holocaust some seven decades after the events of World War II. And meanwhile, you want to blame Trump for something that Obama did. Buddy, you're a dumbass, okay? You're a dumbass. It's time to fess up. Jesus Christ, the United Nations, was created to become the housing for the Illuminati Great Conspiracy. <clears throat> no! Sorry, not sorry. It's time for another shankity shank act, huh? We're gonna focus on these plays, these three act plays summed up in three posts in a fucking nutshell. Let's take a look. Seriously, look. seriously, look, 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 look. look. Breaking, ABC and Disney do the right thing. There are still boundaries in the age of Trump that cannot be crossed. Thank you for putting values over money. And get this. Any of them mentioned to you that we had a domestic terror attack a week ago and you still won't call it what it was, you cowardly fuck? I mean, these are just a few of the words that... that Keith Olbermann has said to Donald Trump. He, you know, seriously, this guy is a dumbass. Not only is he a dumbass, but he's a retard. Selectively retarded. It's unbelievable how retarded he is. I mean, just, 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 just look. Look at this guy, Keith Olbermann. Oh, no! I hate Trump, so I'm going to bash the shit out of him and libel him on Twitter. You didn't realize you were going to get sued? Fuck you, man. Fuck Keith Bolderman. Fuck him right in his dick. Because that's all he's good for. Oh, by the way, Roseanne was guilty of the same thing, and they canceled her show's reboot. Like that. In a fucking heartbeat. Keith Olbermann does the same thing, knowing good and well that he won't get away with it, and ESPN signs a new deal with him. Are you fucking shooting me? This is bullshit! Well, of course it's bullshit. I mean, then, of course, you'd have to realize that Keith Olbermann is literally full of it. So, yeah, it just makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus! Oh my god! Look, look at this dumbass! Look at this dumbass! You fucking kidding me? And you call yourself a journalist! Guess what? You ain't no journalist, buddy. You know what you are? A Democratic donkey dick sucker. You suck Bill Clinton's dick. Anyway, here's what Mike Cernovich calls a fake news play in 3X. Watch this. Watch this. You're never going to believe it if you don't see it. Okay, so. Okay. Julie Davis makes this bullshit post. It's obviously a shit post because we know what the fuck it is. Absolutely, there's no question. Shut up! Alright. But anyway, she types... Depressing side at Trump rally in Nashville. 
adorable young boy, probably about my son's age, pointing off on at me and other reporters and snapping pigs while screaming, Vegas! A child who will grow up believing a free and fair press is the enemy. A bad thing to be mocked at. <laughs> You fucking kidding me? What a joke. I mean, it is just fucking shit. Man, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And then Donald Trump. My man and our president. He may not be your president, but he sure as hell is mine. Makes this perfect remark. Listen to this. Listen to this. The failing and corrupt New York Times estimated the crowd last night at 1,000 people, when in fact it was many times that number, many times over, and the arena was rocking. This is the way they demean and disparage. They are very dishonest people who don't get me, and never did, and they never will either, because they'd be in jail. Oh! savage level goodness right here man thank god for people like real donald trump and and then julia tries to come with a bullshit reply president real donald trump is correct about his crowd last night my estimate was way off and we have corrected our story to reflect the fire marshal's estimate of 5,500 people. When we get it wrong, we say so. Um, bullshit. When you get it wrong, you stick to the bullshit and you don't change it unless you're forced to by someone who actually knows the truth. Fuck off the Mexico and go suck the president of Mexico's dick, man. Do us all a favor, okay? Piss off. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. The Illuminati Great Conspiracy. Cybersum. All point. Happy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Damn, you want to be the gospel? Why are you doing like that? Oh my god, man. You gotta be kidding me. Oh my god. I don't know. <laughs> I have no words for this. There's, there's nothing I can say that can justify the fucking cringe and comedy that is this picture of, of this guy. What the hell he is? I don't even care about it. And, and, and we all know what they are, so just fuck it. Oh! Is that? No! You didn't! I'm not even, I'm not even trying to, to, to kiss anybody's ass. I'm dead serious when I say this. This is, this is so 
it's so bad that it's so good at the same time. You might even consider it a modern art masterpiece. Just like Arlie Ermey would say. You know? It, it really is that good. Seriously. Oh! Oh my god! My eyes! Ah, my eyes! What is that? There's a cross on his cheek. Why the hell he has a cross on his cheek? Oh, is this like the Buddha and the I don't know. This is just the... I ain't gonna make shit of it. I can tell you right now, as long as I'm a man, that is totally fucking great, man. Like something you see out of a museum. Oh my god! That's just me. Yeah, you got the right. Hey, I, I just want to know one question. Yeah. What the hell is that? Those are jeans. <laughs> <laughs> you call those jeans? I've worn better jeans around my dog's neck. I'm not gonna judge. But, but this is totally good. This, this rocks. This rocks with so much epic awesomeness. Such win. You sure got that right. Okay, can, we, can we go to the next one now? Boy, say, that would be great to know. Let's go to the next one now. Oh, look! Whoa! Holy fuck oh, shit! Oh. I can't even. What is that? God, how, how bad has he aged just based on this arrow? What the fucking oh. oh my god. <laughs> and then he has his name Below the Tree? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. That was it. Totally agree, man. Yeah. I'll do that. Why are you doing this one? Seriously. This just... This, this, I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe... Maybe we should just push the envelope a bit further and see what's in this last tab here. What do we do? Go for it. I'll say go for it, man. You ain't got nothing to lose. Yeah! Yeah, man. Obviously, looks like the team here. Not that it has anything to do with the movie Conan's, but still. And, 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 and the look and expression on his face, he's like, What the hell am I doing here? Seriously. You don't do it, right? I don't know what he's doing here either. Is, is, that, a, is that a mole? Yes, that is a mole. Oh, no! <laughs> Damn old boy, Bobby, why are you doing like that? Oh my god! Got to... But anyway, as they always say, Fuck you! And this just in coming from Fox News. Millennial, 30 years old, evicted from parents' home, paid for car storage but balked at child support, according to some records that were clearly shown. And yet losers like him 
who never worked one honest minute in their lives and got handed life on a golden platter of silver mirth will be more likely to get picked up by CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, Netflix, or Facebook than anybody else. Funny irony is funny! <laughs> and this is why we still have abortion, in case you're wondering. Thanks! This just in from my friend Ralph on Twitter 19 hours ago, responding to a bunch of dumbass libtards. Rejected by America! Hollywood celebrities shilled for Hillary. The entire mainstream media shilled for Hillary. Multinational banks supported Hillary. Mega corporations supported Hillary. The advertising industry supported Hillary. The military industrial complex supported Hillary. She spent millions to hire social media promoters. Muslim nations gave Hillary millions. The internet companies supported Hillary. George Soros supported Hillary. The FBI and the DOJ conspired to help Hillary. The DNC rigged the primaries for Hillary. Never Trump supported Hillary. Black Lives Matter supported Hillary. Feminists supported Hillary. The GOP establishment supported Hillary. Leaders of foreign nations supported Hillary. Bernie Sanders shilled for Hillary. President Obama shilled for Hillary. All of the living former presidents supported Hillary. Her serious health problems were covered up including the fact that she was wearing a catheter, and yet she wanted to hide the fact. People were murdered on Hillary's behalf. They rigged the debates for Hillary. They used voter fraud to help Hillary. The polls were always in Hillary's favor. She spent 500000 a day on advertisements. Hillary spent over $1.3 billion, with a B, on her campaign. Everyone expected Hillary to win. Newsweek printed a special victory issue for Hillary. She threatened electoral college voters. Many states were forced to do a recount. And she still fucking lost. Ladies and gentlemen, Hillary Clinton. The face of failure. Thanks a lot for that Super Smash Brothers melee announcer. We here needed that. Absolutely, I mean, there's just no question. Before I end this episode of Talking with Enemies, I personally would like to thank the 300 Twitter followers who find my content to be interesting enough to require a follow. I would like to thank all 300 of you Twitterers who have followed me and who understand the importance of silencing the blue wave that is selective retardation, also known as liberalism. I cannot stress enough how important this is because you all too much to me not to consider. So thank you all to the 300 followers on Twitter who find my content to be interesting. And thank you all for helping me get this far. By the way, this episode of Talking to Myself News is sponsored by more charitable who remind you to see how we are leading land, habitat, and water conservation every single day. But only if you follow them. And it's also been brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which is made possible by suckers like you. Thanks, you. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting which is paid predominantly by SOCUS! Like Thank you very much.
very much. Bless you all. Have a blessed rest of your lives. And we hope to see you again next time. And in the meantime, we ask sincerely that you fuck your troubles. Come on, get happy. Let you wash your sins away. Mm, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Have a blessed day or night, depending on where in the world you come from. I, I don't care. Remember, if you want my permission to download this video, message me on any of my social media channels and ask for it, and I'll give you my IK. Okay. And above all else, don't be a jackass. Please, be real. Don't steal.